excited to share the Word of God with you. I want you to turn to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I want to be uh, talking about this subject today, staying full of God. Staying full of God. Being full of Him and staying full of Him. And I realized um, not long into my study of this topic that in order to be filled with God and stay full of God, you've got to be connected with God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Him in prayer one more time. Father, I pray. Lord, that you would fall fresh on us again today. Lord, I I want this word to come out of my mouth the way you want it, the way you intend it. Lord, that it would touch our hearts in a way that it's powerful, the only way that that, that, that only you can do. You do the change, Lord. I pray that that there would be hearts changed in this place today, that we would become more full of you, uh, more connected with you. Uh, and, and live in a life that is just so honoring to you. God, it's been such a, a great time together. I, I pray that it's put a smile on your face. I'm sure it has. And I pray that that would continue throughout the rest of our time together as you have your way. Let your will be done. Let us experience on earth as it is in heaven, your kingdom in this place. We love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I want to I want to talk about that. I think I titled this message "The Great Investment," the Great Investment. And there is so much to this life that requires us to give. And I'm going to use a word in just a few moments that I think Chris actually called a dirty word. And that word is commitment. And we're going to unpack that a little bit. I want to show you something in Romans, and then we're going to fly right into it. So look down in verse 18 of Romans 1. We're not going to go far, but I've got a key verse I'm going to show you in just a second. Verse 18, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, Because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. And here's the key key verse. Check this one out. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being, and birds, and animals, and reptiles, and money, and houses, and cars, and careers. And I could keep going in our day in the perspective of what we go into. But I want to stop there because... I feel like that there's an anointing on this message. I got this word from the Lord last week, and I wanted to share it with you. Chris, if you wanted to preach, I would have sat down because I'm not jealous of this pulpit. But I want to talk about being joined, being connected, being yoked up, being focused, and being committed. And that's not something we see much anymore. I mean, we still have marriages, but I don't think too many people are married like they should be. We still have weddings, but very few are connected like we should be. We have a ceremony, sure. We throw rice at them, absolutely. They get the tax deductions, but very few people are actually committed because it's way too easy to quit. It's way too easy when a storm comes, when the first wind blows, when the first fight happens, any little storm, and they're out of there. They check out. It's not only in marriages, it's in churches, it's in places of business, it's in friendships, it's in relationships because they have no root. They're not connected because they have no connectivity, and they're only there for the convenience. And I know not everybody's like this. I pray that, that for the, the vast majority of us here and, and listen online, that, that we are connected, that we're yoked up with Jesus. You know what he told us? He, he said to abide. And when we abide in him, there is life. And not just life, but abundant life. So we have to stay connected. But when people don't see the importance of that connectivity, when they don't see the importance of responsibility, they're willing to forsake all that and they just walk away. From their commitments. 
And we seldom see what a sold out, all in for God Christian looks like today. Because if we did, we'd see more people labeled as radical, as, as just downright crazy. Like he's just sold out. What, is, what does he mean living like that for the Lord? What, who does he think he is? And many call themselves believers, but they're just really not connected. They're really not joined because we have not a really good idea of what our responsibility is. You know, we know that we're yoked to Jesus. We know that it's all Jesus and what he did on the cross and through the resurrection, right? It's not Jesus 99 and you won. That, that's not how it works. It's Jesus 100 and, and our faith is in him and that's what sets us free. But there's a responsibility on our part to stay connected. And you can't have a relationship only to get if you don't plan to give. I have a question. Do you give as good as you get? Add up what you're getting. Put it up against what you're giving. And you'll see if it's worth anything. Yeah, because you got people that go to work. They, they've got a job. And they want the money. Everybody wants the money. Everybody wants the paycheck at the end of the week. Everybody wants to get paid. Did you know that you could make $100 an hour? But it's the value that you put into it that makes the difference. If you were just getting paid by the hour, you could sit at home in your easy chair and they'd just mail you the check. But why are you getting paid? What is it that sets you apart making 20, 50, 100, 1,000 dollars an hour? You're on salary making a million dollars a year? What is it that, that, that you are giving to the company, to your place of business that makes you worth that? Because like most people, some people just want something for nothing. They just want a little bit of God. They want to know that they're not going to hell. They're, they, they just want to know that, that, that they're good, that they're on right standing with God, that, that, they're, that they're okay with God, and that's enough. But they don't want to go farther with God. They don't want to get to know God more. They don't want the, the fullness of God because they don't understand reciprocity. And that's a word that really jumped out at me this week, reciprocity. If you're not willing to give at least as good as you get, it ain't going to last. It's why people can't stay anywhere anymore. It's why people walk out on each other. It's why people are, are just so eager to quit and give up. And you'll get locked up behind what could be because what could be is locked up behind commitment. Until you're committed, you'll never get to be what could be. What could be. Some people have never thrown their whole self into anything. School, work, marriage, church. Oh my God, you've had one foot in and one foot out and you can't decide which way you want to go. You're like, I'll just go a little bit, but I'm not willing to go all the way in. If you would be willing to go all the way in and see what God could do with that, it would radically change you, change your family, change your marriage, change this church. Oh, it's what's going to make your death so sad. Because you've never fully engaged. You've never fully committed. You want to get something, but you've never thrown your whole self into it. You want to get something. You want to come to this church, but you're not committed. If you don't have reciprocity, sure, it's good to come to church. You come to this church, and you should. But if you're not really joined... I'm not just talking about membership here. But if you're not really connected, if you're not really willing to give something for what you're getting, that's what I'm talking about. Because some people will say, well, I just go to that church to get a word. Reciprocity. What are you giving? You're getting a good word. You're getting great worship. You're getting to worship Almighty God. But what are you giving in return? What do you give back for what you get? Because without reciprocity, you'll never reach the apex of any relationship. And that's what this life is about. Relationship with Almighty God and relationship with one another. But if we're not willing to give, 
Or if we're not willing to invest, sure, you'll catch some crumbs. You'll, you'll catch some crumbs at the master's table, but you won't get the children's spread. Mm. You'll get the puppy dog blessing that comes with being at the right place at the right time. But now you're getting older and you're running out of time and you don't know what you might do and you're wondering what would have happened if I'd have given it all in school? What would have happened if I'd have given it all in my marriage? What would have happened if I'd have given my whole self to that idea that the Lord put in you? What if you'd really thrown your whole self, your whole self, because you've been casually committed. I started to call that this sermon casual commitment. But I was afraid if we put that online, the word commitment would turn people off. So I thought more of investment. That might, you know, turn some people on. But casual commitment. Some of the most talented people are the least committed. Because they'll use talent as camouflage to cover up their lack of commitment. Because if you're talented enough, you can fool some people. You could get by, but you'll never know what you could have achieved. You'll psych people out. You'll fake them out. You'll be so talented, but you'll get back on your haunches and just sit there and not go all the way in. And then you're thinking about the good old days, the glory days. Oh, man, I was that good in high school. What could you have been in college? What could you have been at the pro level of anything? We're not just talking sports, but, you know. You were made for a hundredfold. Some of y'all are, are just fine and dandy with 60-fold, 30-fold, 10-fold. You were created for a hundredfold. Why would you want to settle for anything less? That's who God created us to be. Now, I can't be committed to everything. I, you know, I can't work a hundred jobs. I can't be married to ten women. Thank God. <laughs> I can't join five churches because I take my commitments too seriously. What I'm committed to, I take very seriously. And I ain't running around loosely spreading it here and there. But so many people are advertising things that, that they can't carry. But I'll tell you this. There are people out here, I'm convinced of this, out here that can sing, that can play, that can teach, that can do all sorts of things for the glory of God. But they're unwilling to make the commitment. What God's asking them to do. I pray that's, that, that's not you. But then you wonder why. People that are like that. They wonder why their prayers aren't getting answered, Elaine. Tell three people sitting next to you, commitment. Just tell them commitment. Commitment. Because you take a half-committed man and put them together with a half-committed woman, and the best you're going to get is half-committed kids. Stop fussing at your kids. They are a reflection of you. Don't be half committed. Stop trying to hide. Stop trying to pretend. I mean, you're trying to get people to fall in love with the version of you that you've not even discovered yourself. Commitment. All in commitment. And you come in here and you raise your hand and you... You say, Lord, I give myself to you, but you don't. People say, I'm a member of that church, but they're not. You marry somebody and, and, and you say, you could always count on me, but they don't mean it. And then you wonder why you're not further along. It's not the devil, it's not demons, it's not haters. You aren't closer to God right now because you've never thrown your whole self at him. You've never fully committed, fully surrendered. Now, I'm not talking about giving your heart to him. Yes, faith will save you. Amen. But I'm talking about taking the next step, the threshold of salvation. So many people are dissatisfied with this. But there's so much more to God. Chris Taylor says this all the time. You can have as much of God as you want. You've got as much of God right now. As you will allow in your life. Because he's always willing to give you more. And see, we think greatness goes on sale. We, we think closeness with God just, you know, ha happens haphazardly. Greatness never goes on sale. Being filled with God costs what it costs. 
He always led with the cost. Jesus said, follow me. Not for the benefits. Yeah, those are magnificent and they come. But Jesus always lived with the cost. Follow me and this is what it's going to cost you, your life. You know what he says? You're going to have to die. You, you just, you know, you, here's the way to get closer to Jesus. Yourself, you got to die. And then you want to get a little closer, die some more. You want to get a little closer, die some more. You know, you just got to keep dying to yourself as you surrender and give your full self to him. I wish I had 20 people that wanted to praise God up in here. Can we just give him some praise right now? Yeah! Yes, sir! God told Abraham, I swear I'm going to bless you. It was a promise. He didn't say, I think I might bless you. If I, 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 it was a promise. It ain't no joke. He said, if I told you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to bless you. So your first commitment has got to be to the Lord. Got to be to God. And if you want to be full of him, you better be committed to him. Here's another thing I want you to be committed to. Your family. Because if you only love me when you like me, this ain't going to last very long. There has to be a commitment because sooner or later I'll get on your nerves. But if you're committed to me, to love me through the thick and the thin, through the ups and the downs, through the mistakes I make, through the things that make you mad and irritate you, if you've committed to love me, we're going to make it. Because the reciprocity is I've committed to love you. I may not like everything about you, but I've committed to love you. And in a marriage, it's so, so important. And your family, and as crazy as they are, you've got to be committed to them. In the storm, in the rain, in the sunshine, in the pain, I had to put something in there that rhymed. You know, this was what we do. But if you're just committed to the me and not to the us in a marriage, you're in trouble. It's not a feeling because you better come home when you're in love and come home when you're not in love. You better love your children when they're doing what you ask them to do and when they're not doing what you ask them to do. It's not a feeling. Y'all don't want to hear the whole truth, do you? Because it ain't, it ain't like a Hallmark fairy tale movie that you see where everybody falls in love and it's so super. You know why I love a Hallmark movie, though? Because at the end, it's over. You don't see what happens after the end and all the credits and the fighting and the falling out. It's just that hour and a half window of pure love. And it just gives me goosebumps. And I feel like a Care Bear again, like, like heart shooting out of my belly. Like, yeah, I just love a good Hallmark movie. But if you're, a, a, if you're a dad, man, you, you, you got to be saying, like, you're my son, you're my daughter at the supper table, you're my daughter at the courthouse, you're my daughter at the police station, you're my daughter at the whorehouse, you are my daughter, and I'm deeply committed to you. That's what every dad should be saying to his children. I'm so committed through it all. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. Here's another thing I want you to be committed to. Your church. I've never seen a generation quite like this, where we're just so lackadaisical, you know, come and go and easy going. It's lucky if you see them three times a month, not mentioning Wednesday night prayer meeting. You could forget that. But we sacrifice nothing and we serve nowhere. Not talking to everybody, but if this is you know, hitting where it's supposed to, I don't know who I'm preaching to. But people say this, who's preaching on Sunday? What kind of music are they having? Because I, I might not show up. I don't know if I could get something. I, I might not even go because you got a gimme mentality. People have gimme mentalities. Oh, I lost y'all on that one. When you don't come to give, yeah, we come to get, absolutely. That's our responsibility as, as up here to give you something to, to help. I hope I feed you enough that you got to take doggy bags home. you you got to fill up the little containers to take it home where you could feast on it throughout the week. Because I love what you said. It's the word of God that offers that life, that is that life. And if you just, you know, on Sunday morning, God forbid, that's the only nutrition that you get through the week. Because you're not going to make it. You're going to be weak. Like weak. we got to be strong and we got to be committed. So. Where's the reciprocity? It's good to consider where you can go to get fed. But what do you give for everything that you get? 
you're only, if you're, if you're, let me, let me switch this coin. If you're the only one that's giving, if you're a giver and you constantly give, but you're not getting back, you know what happens? It starts to get a little depressing. It starts to lead a little to burnout. It starts to, you know, lead to give up. Any relationship that has no reciprocity will die. It will wither. Strong people will give for a long, long time. But eventually, if they don't see the return, they'll start to back off. And if you don't learn to give like you get in every area. Now, because you think about giving, you're thinking money, right? Or maybe some time. But I'm just I'm open it up to your heart right now. Giving, giving, giving. And it's not just biblical. Like, this is ecological, man. This is, I, I, like, like, this is science. Like, um, I studied science in school. It's, it's the second law of thermodynamics. If you don't constantly add energy, if you don't put back into something, then it will eventually wither and decay and die. So anything you don't add to, it's going to wither. I mean, I can show you, and you all know the Bible, lots of times God said, let the soul rest. You got to put back into it so that it can continue to produce. But here's the problem. No one, well, I should say few people, have ever been taught how to give because the world teaches us how to get. It's about how much you can get. It's about how much money you can store up. They, they teach us how to take, and it's always commanding more, commanding more of God, commanding more of your marriage, commanding more of your relationships than you give. It's good to get, but what did Jesus say? It's better to, come on, than receive. Because any area where you expect more than you give, you'll live in a perpetual state of disappointment. He puts this in very practical terms. Some people, what's the banks giving these days? What, what's the interest rate? 0.00001% or something like that? That's about close. Let's just say it's 1%. So you would ideally put in 100 and earn a dollar's worth of interest. But I'll tell you what the world wants you to think, that you could put in a dollar and get the 100 back. Now, I know that God can do anything he wants to. God's not a linear God, but there is this idea in this thought of reciprocity as God continues to give to us we continue to give to him and you can never outgive him you can pour out your whole heart your whole self your whole body your whole mind to him and he will continually 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 give so like there's this dance that goes on as we give to him as we come to church and yes we get we get fed but as we give him our praise as we give him our worship there is like this it's such a cool thing i can't even find words to describe when that happens, but, oh, thank you, God. Staying full of God, being connected with God, your family. You're going to get through this. This is what you need to be saying. We will get through this. Let's say it together. We will get through this. And we're not just going to get through it. We're going to thrive through this. We're going to come out better on the other side. Yes, I'm homesick for heaven. But we have such a responsibility here to show the world the love of Christ as we give ourselves away. Like a good song, wouldn't it? <laughs> Man, we are so much better together. I'm going to add something to you. Just look at your neighbor. I think I had you do this last time. Just look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to add something to you. It's not an accident that you're sitting beside of me. I will not take from you unless I add to you. I'm going to add to you. And yeah, I might need something from you, but I will be an asset and not a liability. Do you know how many church members today are liabilities? Yeah. Come on. Don't be a liability. Oh my goodness. The only number that doesn't add to the sum total of the equation is zero. So as members of the body of Christ, guess what? We get to add to one another. We get to add value, right? And you're not a zero, but, but what do people get when they get you? Seriously. What, what is your spouse? What is your friends? What, 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 are, what is your church? What are your church? What's your church getting when they get you? And I'll tell you this. If you can deliver on that, you'll never be alone. 
You'll never lack for anything. Assets never get left behind. And, and, and I believe that we all should be committed to the dream that God has put in each one of us. He's given you a dream. He's given you a purpose. He's given you a reason to be alive and drawing hair from him right now. And he wants you to use that, and he wants you to be committed. So if you want to stay full of God, you've got to stay committed to him, your family, your church. You've got to stay committed to the dream he's given you. Invest in what he's put in your hands, right? And I've said this before. Anything that you put in the hands of God will multiply. Anything you put in the hands of God will multiply. Anything you put in the hands of God will multiply. It's biblical. Listen, a, a golf club, it's just a golf club until it's in the right hands. You could pay $50 for a golf club. You could pay $500 for a golf club. But when you put it in the right hands, when you put it in the hands of Tiger Woods, guess what? The value just went up because of his commitment. Because he was out there swinging when he was five. And he was out there swinging when he was nine. And he was out there swinging when he was 12. And so he was committed, committed to be one of the greatest athletes in the world. And that's what commitment will do. Oh, yeah. You're going to get a great return if you've given a great investment. I believe that so much, my toes are dancing in my shoes. <laughs> I'm serious. My beard is shaking right now. You're going to get a great return if you give great investment. I've never met anybody who is successful that didn't have to fight it out, slug it out. I mean, claw and scrape and get beaten and bruised, but they were committed to a, a, a dream. And if God started it, he's going to finish it. Somebody shout yes. 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 Anybody can want it, but you'll not see it until you're committed to it. I'm deeply committed to this church. I'm deeply committed to the kingdom of God. I just want to see the kingdom of God grow and expand. People coming into the family. I mean, that's what I'm deeply, deeply committed to. I really don't care about much else. That's what he's asked us to do. And yeah, we need food and a you know, place to live and clothes and all that good stuff. But, but what are you committed to? Anybody can want it. But, you know, I had it made. I really did. I had it made, and I won't go into it, but over the past several years, I had it made. All I had to do was be conservative. You know, preach a little bit of the word. Preach a little bit of salvation, but don't go too deep. I had it made. Because there's certain people that don't want you to preach the whole truth. Because the truth, will, you know what it does, it really will upset you. Because, you know, change has to happen when you start to hear the truth. It starts to affect you, and, and you've got one or two decisions to make. You're either going to reject it, or you're going to receive it and let it change you. So, you know what I did? I just kept preaching the Bible. Kept preaching the Bible, and they said, that boy's done gone and lost his mind. They said, he can't preach all that. We don't know what to do with all of that. <laughs> and I said, I don't care what they say. I had to do what God said to do. What God said to do. Because I was committed to what I believe. And you'll never, ever, 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 you'll never bring anybody down that's committed to God. If God promised it, it will come to pass I don't know if any of you have been there but um, I got used to folk not liking me I got used to folk kind of putting me down and and uh, but man when you get invested when you start just to give to God when you when you give it to him give him your heart and your mind say okay God just do it just change me I want more of you I told Chris Taylor this I was mowing this is my last story one of my favorite places to pray is on a lawnmower. I don't know why. It's therapeutic to me. I could just, I'm, I'm just drawing lines in the grass. So I'm not having to think. <laughs> but I'm just praying, right? A few months ago. And I remember saying, Lord, it's really cool what you've done. But I know there's so much more. I, I, I'm convinced. There's no question. I said, God, can I have more of you? And it was like, pfft, like, he goes, you said it, man. And I'm like, oh, no, what have I prayed? Because it was like he just, like, the floodgate turned loose. And whoosh, like, 
when I just finally surrendered and turned it over to him. But I'll tell you, man, I will fight for my family. I will fight for what God has put in me. I will fight for this church. I will fight for you. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say commitment. Let's pray. I want to ask, can I get the praise team to come back up? Because I want us to really give ourselves over to him. I don't care how many songs y'all play or what you play, but we're going to give ourselves over to him and, and worship here at the end. I love you, Lord. I love you, God. And I love being loved by you. I love being your son. I love being transformed. Lord, I don't take that for granted. As we surrender, it's really, really, really incredible. Really incredible what you do in and through us. And I know it's not about us. Lord, I pray that it would all glorify you. It would all point to you. Lord, as you have your way in our lives. God, if there's anybody here that's holding back, if there's anybody here that's got one foot in and one foot out, and they're just, they're just not sure, they want to go all the way in, but they're really not sure, give them the courage. Give them the faith to step all the way in as they follow you. Lord, I love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. to the front and just make that commitment once again to the Lord. What a wonderful message that was, a challenging message for all of us this morning. I want to do more for him because he did everything for me, everything for me. We are so blessed. 
Would you just kind of gather around up front, some of you, if you would, just come and let's pray together this morning. Just ask the Lord to give us more of a desire to be closer to Him. More of a desire to seek Him and to trust Him more. And to be the giver, not only the receiver in this end. It's true that we cannot outgive God. And the more that you give, the more you'll receive. And it's not just about money, it's about of yourself. It's about your commitment to Him. What a wonderful message this morning. Do the, I surrender all one more time. And let's just worship the Lord and pray and ask God to help us to surrender all to Him. body and attendance, Lord, of this church, God. I pray for this church to grow, God, to reach this community, Lord, and use these that have come to have committed to you, Lord Jesus, to go forth and share the gospel and encourage others to come and hear your word, to give you praise in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.